Hello and welcome to the Liz Earle Wellbeing Show. I am Liz Earle and I'll be speaking with leading experts and familiar faces from the world of wellbeing to bring you wellness wisdom you can trust. From fitness to gut health, mood to menopause, you'll quickly learn how to spot a gem of wellness wisdom from a passing fad. And this week we're returning to the menopause to discuss the debilitating and sometimes devastating impact that falling oestrogen levels can have on our mood and mental well-being. And I'm joined in my studios by Dr. Rebecca Lewis, a true menopause warrior and GP. She explains the role that oestrogen plays in the brain, what changes to our mood we might expect to see during perimenopause and beyond, and why antidepressants are not the answer, but so sadly often prescribed in error. It's such an important topic, and I do hope that you will share this podcast with your female friends, family and colleagues. And as Rebecca shares in the podcast, knowledge is power and there's no better way to spread this vital information than through the sisterhood. Don't forget, if you'd like to watch our conversation, you can now find The Lizzo Wellbeing Show on YouTube as well as on iTunes, Spotify and all the other podcast platforms. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. So, Rebecca, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. It is so great. I've been so looking forward to this podcast chat. I really have. And it's interesting thinking back when we spoke last time yeah. and we were talking about UTIs and pelvic health That's and right. all of that. We were, weren't we? Yeah. And it was a remark that you made to me as you were leaving the mm. studios mm. about oestrogen mm. and about the limbic system in the brain and mm. mood and emotion. Mm that I just thought oh I stop stop don't leave I want, I want to talk to you about that so you're back here today to talk about that specifically yes definitely mm. so let's go back to the beginning in talking about oestrogen why yeah. does it affect mood so much yes it's interesting isn't it but it it really this is the reason women come to see me in the clinic mainly not the hot flushes so much not the muscle pains but the psychological changes that happen in the menopause so as you know, in the perimenopause, we run out of eggs and our oestrogen levels fluctuate. And this is the key. It's the fluctuation in oestrogen levels that are really quite bad for the brain in terms of the limbic system, which is an area of the brain uh, to do with our anxiety levels, our mood, our concentration, fatigue, motivation, libido. And oestrogen actually is a neurotransmitter there, similar to 5-HT and... and uh, What's 5-HT? So that's a 5-hydroxytryptamine, uh, and that's a uh, neurotransmitter that they use in antidepressants uh, to, to increase the levels to help uh, low mood. Right. So oestrogen is just as important as, as that in this area. Um, and fluctuating oestrogen levels... Um, will give rise to increasing anxiety in many people and low, flat mood. So it's it's logical why this happens, and it mm. really does happen to most women, I think, get a degree of ang increased anxiety yeah. in the perimenopause. So we have oestrogen receptors in our brains. That's right, yeah. Yep. And we can expect to see oestrogen levels changing from what sort of age? Well, the average age of menopause here in England, uh, UK, is 51. So the perimenopause could precede that by 10 years. So, so 41. Yeah, 41 you could... And of course... Uh, on average, on which average, means there'll be some in yeah, their 30s. Exactly. Mid, mid to late Exactly. 30s. One in 100 women will be under 40. So some people will start to uh, experience these, these symptoms in, the, in their mid-30s. And would you say that that's mm. one of the first early symptoms because presumably you're still having yeah. periods at that time that's so right. you're not going to be thinking right. yes oh I'm heading to the menopause yes yeah. I think it is an early symptom yeah I think it's um it's insidious as most of the symptoms are in the perimenopause because your ovarian function can suddenly get better and get back to normal for two three four months we're living in a in a sandwich generation now aren't we we've got mm. younger children um and we, you know we older, have parents. older parents. parents so we exactly we're, we're stuck in the middle so there's often excuse oh i'm feeling low i'm feeling more anxious sure. because my parents or their kids are playing up teenage children or work you yeah, know pressures. it's always pressures mm. of work so we put it down to that because the next month you feel a bit better but actually, when you look back in time, you see yeah. I've become much more anxious over the last year um, and my mood is low and flat. And it's a typical type of mood I see really with, with women. It's um, a loss of joy. Um, That's it's a really kind of good a, expression. Yeah, a joyless mm. sort of existence. Yeah. Flat. Flat. Mm -hmm. 
So even when something lovely happens, perhaps going on holiday or something, that they can't feel the excitement, they can't think, oh, how lovely, great, enthused. All they can think about is, well, what, but what if, um, what am I going to pack? What am I going to wear? I've got to look right. after the children. You think silly things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, that gets in the way of, of, of the joy. And it's, it's, a, mm. it's a joy, grey, flat sort of feeling. Uh, awful. Yeah, really horrible. Awful. And, horrible. And, and when I look yeah. back on myself, mm. uh, in my mid-40s, it was a very busy time. I was mm. going through the sale of the Lizelle Beauty Company. Yes. I was travelling a lot. Yeah. I had younger children. Yeah. Um, older children, older parents, yes. you know, and so many things. Yeah. You could put that down, down to, to the fact that I wasn't sleeping very well. Yeah. And, you know, I was feeling quite stressed. But quite. obviously you write it off and you think, yes. well, you know, of course I'm stressed and busy because yes. work is hard and, yeah. you know, life is, is full. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I haven't got any room for any joy that's in my life. I know, I know. Gosh, Gosh I, I like, so wish that it, I'd had... If only we'd known. But it is a bit earlier. It, it is difficult, though, isn't it, to yeah. know? Because, you know, yeah, sometimes it could be because of those reasons you so mentioned. So can we the test beginning. for it then? If, you know, if, if someone's listening to this thinking, mm. oh, this is me or this is my sister or whatever, mm. what happens when you go to your GP to talk about it? So it's really in the context of other symptoms as well. What's happening to your periods? They may still be coming fairly regularly. You may have always had a 28-day cycle. It could have just changed slightly to 26 or 29 days. Mm. The um, bleeding may be a little longer and heavier or lighter and shorter. So it's change. There's been a change. Mm-hmm. Um other associated symptoms of fluctuating uh, estrogen levels, so migraines have got worse, sleep is poor, muscle aches and pains, and of course, mm. hot flushes and sweats, which may yeah. or may not be present. And palpitations, racing palpitations, heart, that yeah, was one of the exactly. things that I had. Uh, yes, definitely. And changes in my ears, I used to get mm, tinnitus. Ringing, um, ringing yeah. nerve dysfunctions, and not mm. commonly talked about, it's a good thing to raise actually, mm. because I often see women with tinnitus, yeah. um, or pins and needles in their legs, and they're worried yes. they've got a terrible you know, uh, think about like MS or something, like MS and have been yeah. referred actually in some cases. Uh, because and I used to get a lot of cystitis that. and UTIs, yes. low grade UTIs yes. all the time. Yeah, exactly. Through, from you know, the, through my 40s, through low, yes, losing the, estrogen. Yeah, in, in the bladder and, and that area. Mm. Mm. So. so now a lot of women um, that I speak to, obviously yeah. on social media, uh, will say that they've been to their GP mm. and the basic prescription is you're depressed have some antidepressants yeah. have some Prozac yeah. or whatever no I mean this is this is wrong and we're, what we're trying to change yeah. we need education out there for doctors um, and to raise awareness in society and, and women and their employers and their husbands and children everyone really mm. um, antidepressants you can see why people would say antidepressants a woman comes in they've got 10 minutes to assess these these ladies um, and they may think oh gosh I'm only allowed one um, one symptom for the appointment so what I'm feeling really yes. is seeming so low so that's I need to get that about. out you so don't that's talk, all I talk about, about. The, the period fluctuations no. and all, the... that's right and also the gosh. women may think well that's my you know the sweats and the funny periods not bothering you too much and that's my menopause so that's to one side right. that's not bothering me I want to see the GP about my mood not realising that they're connected, they're connected and they're one and the same so many women may say look I'm just feeling so low I'm crying all the time I can't cope at work please help me mm. I think I need antidepressants mm. it could be a typical conversation the problem is when you do give antidepressants, which have a, a very good use if, if, if for clinical depression, they don't help in this situation very much. They may take the edge off of the anxiety a little, but um, estrogen replacement, uh, you know, is the best treatment uh, for this low mood of, of the menopause. And it's, it's, it's treating the reason why it's, it's happening. It's getting to the root. It's, it's getting to the yeah. root cause of fluctuating low estrogen levels by replacing with the same type of estrogen that the woman has lost. It rectifies yeah. the, the, the problem um, and, of course, is recommended by NICE guidance. And, uh, Interesting that you talk about, treatment. Yeah, mm. yeah, about NICE guidelines because I, I was reading them yet again the other night, <laughs> my, my bedside reading, <laughs> yes, yeah. and because they, they are they are quite bulky, but they you are. have to drill down to find the real kind of yeah. key, key points there. Yeah. And in some cases, the NICE guidelines on menopause treatment is you know, a little bit kind of on the fence, a little bit mm. vague. Mm. But with this, it isn't. It very clearly yeah. says that's right. low mood and anxiety, yes. your first line of treatment for it's, women is, it does exactly. is offering HRT. Correct. That's exactly right. And it also goes further and says yeah. that there's no mm. evidence that antidepressants actually work. 
No, that's right. They, and they don't um, really. In fact, they may make things worse because they increase a protein uh, called sex hormone binding globulin. Um, and, an, and higher levels of that will bind the testosterone, which will lower libido. So if a woman already has low libido because she's in the perimenopause, we know that that is a symptom. Um, because of the limbic system again, um, it may well be much worse with antidepressants. So, you know, it's really important to get the right diagnosis yes. and get the right treatment and realise that low mood and increasing anxiety, irregular, slightly changing periods, perhaps some sweats or flushes, remembering 20% of women don't get flushes or sweats. Yeah, no, I, I never did. I had other symptoms. No, no. Mm. But the whole, looking at the whole um, s syndrome, really, is, is right. important. So because we know that when we go to our GP, we're only allowed to talk about one thing. This is it, yeah. Do we need then to wrap that up? Is this really good advice that when we go in, because yeah. we're feeling anxious and we have low mood, that we yeah. go in, you know, really forearmed with the knowledge yes. to say, I yes. think this may be a menopausal yes. symptom because I also yeah. have... X, y, you know, rattle off yeah. a few things mm. but you know my mm. main concern yes. is is this this is my overriding symptom yes i think that would be really helpful to yeah. focus the mind of your practitioner mm. to actually this is this is probably hormonal in in origin mm. there's something called the green climacteric scale which i find really useful in my mm. practice and that lists um uh, 24 symptoms of the menopause um, and if someone could fill that in and, and, and show their doctor and can we that, get that easily where, where yes, do you it's find on, that it's online uh, is that on menopause doctor on menopause doctor okay. yeah it is Great. I would we'll, recommend we'll, we'll, that we'll put a link up for yeah, that that's, that's really helpful device so you can that. print that off you can print that off fill it in fill it in and, and see how many symptoms you have and that and just put it in front of your doctor that's right that's right, because all those symptoms are due to fluctuating or low estrogen levels. So it could actually potentially bring about the whole way that GP appointments have to change. Because it it's... certainly helped me as a GP, and it's <laughs> it's sped up my appointments because I always run late. So yes. I'm very pleased when when I ask my patients to fill this in. So when they come in, I can immediately see what's what's causing them a problem yeah. and how they're responding to treatment and, mm. and it comparing with their last one. And it, it just helps right. because another thing. So you can do a sort of like a six monthly you could do review that's right yeah see, exactly. see how, see see how you score improving. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly um yeah and it's 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 very useful to sort of quantify what your symptoms are yeah. and how they're wouldn't it be amazing if every woman just as you get your sort of health recall at age mm. 50 when they talk about coming in for a mammogram or yeah. a colonoscopy yes. or whatever you know if age 45 say i think it'd be brilliant Everyone was sent one of these or a link and said, look, yes. why don't you just go and have a look yes, and, yes, and see yeah, if exactly. there's anything here that's, yeah. that's bothering you. And at least just to then have a baseline potentially to work from. So mm. you could even start it in your 30s or 40s. Yeah. You could just hop online, yeah. Yeah. print it off, keep yes. it for your own record yes, exactly. and share it with your girlfriends. Yeah, so it's called the Green Climacteric. Green scale. climacteric scale. Yes, it's Thank a bit you. of a mouthful, <laughs> but it's on menopause doctor, okay, so it is great there, um, to, to track symptoms. And of course, apps as well are helpful to track yes, symptoms. Yes, super. Um, I know that I Louise has got a, yes. Dr. Newson has got a great app. Yes, she has coming, coming out actually, which, which any I think day. will be very helpful for, yeah. for people to yeah, yeah, for, track for keeping symptoms. track. Yeah. So replacing estrogen, uh, that's the main message here for mm. the brain. Yep. Yep. Obviously, it's going to help with other things as well, presumably. Yes, yeah, exactly. The hypothalamus is to do with our temperature regulation in the brain again. Um, so choosing a an HRT that has good penetration into the blood-brain barrier is important. And how do we, we do that? Um, 17 beta estradiol is is very is a good potent estrogen, and that's, and that's the one that's called in gels and patches. That's right. It's called body identical regulated body identical HRT, um, and certainly I I've always prescribed that, and it's given through the skin. Um, it's much safer that way because it's not metabolized by the liver, which if you have oral estrogen, it's metabolized by the liver and that increases your clotting factors, which puts you at a slightly increased risk, not a huge increased risk, but slightly increased risk of blood clot and, mm. and, and stroke, which generally is not a problem in the main population, but in people who've had a previous blood clot or people who have migraines um, or perhaps overweight or liver problems or other hypertension, high blood pressure, then using estrogen through the skin is a safe way for them. Right. So mm. if somebody came to you 
bit overweight, high blood mm. pressure, it mm. wouldn't preclude them from having not at all. a no. gel or a patch. Absolutely not. I've heard that the gels actually in the patches mm. can in some cases even lower blood pressure. That's right, exactly. It has a positive effect on blood pressure and cholesterol. Uh, Does so it the, really? So the cardiovascular profile improves. Um, the good cholesterol goes up, the bad cholesterol goes down. I didn't realise that estrogen, estrogen was affecting cholesterol. Really, really does. It's I guess it makes yeah. sense because mm. cholesterol is a hormone. That's right. And it's yes. like your mothership, yes. isn't it? The hormone yes. from which yes. all the other hormones are made. And I always say don't go low fat in midlife yes. because you need yes. your good quality fat That's as your right. kind of building blocks for the other hormones. Mm. Exactly. So it has, has a good effect on that, a good effect on the blood pressure. And it halves your risk of heart disease if taken within 10 years of your last period so it's a win-win really isn't yeah, it just yeah, winning all yeah. round we've just yes. got to get this message out so yes. I hope that everybody listening <laughs> you know you're you're used to us talking about menopause and HRT mm. but this is I think the the brain research is is really fascinating and what has struck me uh, and again it was a comment this passing comment that you made the last time we met mm. was that the anxiety levels can be so much yeah with the, yeah. the loss of estrogen and you almost become fixated on something so yes. women potentially because yes. they've read all the scare stories in the media yes. wrongly reporting you yeah. know links with these uh, with um, breast, breast cancer, cancer for example mm. you can become fixated on that yes if if you're slightly prone to uh, obsessive thinking which you know or ocd um these fluctuating levels of estrogen will make that worse quite often. Or if you have a pre-existing mental health problem, it often gets worse. So bipolar, for example, it mm. can trigger a relapse. Um, but often what can happen with women, they become so anxious and they often have a health anxiety, it comes out in health and, of course, worry and fear about starting HRT. Yeah. So, um, so it becomes it, over-exaggerated in your it's mind. Over exaggerated, it becomes this big thing that I can't have this it's going to give me yeah. breast cancer. Perception of, of things that are, are completely skewed. I mean, I've seen women who are so anxious they can't get out of the house. They're yeah. housebound. Obviously, they've given up their job. I mean, outright, yeah. you know, terrible, really. I know women who've stopped Great. driving because yes, they're too anxious. Yes, that's a very common thing, yeah. driving on the motorway or driving in general, yeah. um, or health anxiety. And it is absolutely paralysing some women's mm. lives. It's, it's, it's awful. It's terrible. Um, they can't go out of the house. Um, the other thing that doesn't help, of course, is that when you finally do get your HRT, for yeah. example, you get your gel, Yes. you then read the leaflet that goes with it. Yes. And <laughs> Which is so is, wrong and so out of date. It is. It and is. it talks about, you know, you talked about not having a risk with DVT or thrombosis. Mm, mm, mm. And yet the leaflet says... It does, yeah. Don't use this if you're at risk of thrombosis. It's completely wrong that the, the leaflet is actually almost referring to um, certainly oral estrogen um, and, and and nothing to do with the transdermal or through the skin this patches is and gels. Where it else is appalling. would it happen in medicine that you would, be, you would get a prescription yes. drug? Yes. You'd read the leaflet. I mean, frankly, yeah. we never read the leaflets anyway. No. I mean, you know, you, you uh, get a yes, packet of yes. paracetamol. paracetamol. Do you actually any... read where yes. it says, you know, about liver failure? Some of the perimenopausal women will, yes, <laughs> well, when they're anxious. But yes, but... <laughs> generally one doesn't generally yeah. you don't no. but obviously here you've got your you finally yeah. plucked up courage you've got to the doctor you finally yeah. persuaded that your doctor that you are low in estrogen yeah you you get your prescription you get home you decide to read the leaflet which yes. is something that you know yes. you do because you're feeling anxious and it has wrong information it's outrageous it's so wrong. It's, it was almost it, as wrong as saying this will give you um, the. This is the elixir of life. It's as wrong as that, isn't it's, it? It's, it's the, the opposite. wrong way around. It's the opposite. It's, yeah, it's actually saying it's. Yeah. This could really uh, cause problems when that's not yes. the case. When it's not the case. It's not the case. It makes me so furious. And I've I've recently been doing a few yeah. live talks. Yeah. And each time, literally, yeah. this is absolutely no word of a lie. Mm. Each time I have given a talk, mm. I have. Um, been taken aside by a lady at the end yes. who said, I'm so pleased I listened to you yeah. because I did go to my GP. Yeah. I have got the estrogen gel. Yes. It's sitting in my bathroom cupboard. Yes. I've been looking at it for three months, too oh, scared to use it. I know. And now I will go home and use it. Yes. And that, I know. It's so wrong, isn't it, it? It is so wrong. And that's not, I have that too. You know, people ring me up, oh, I'm a little bit scared of So they've got it, it from you. They've, they've got come it. To they've come to see me. They've got it from me. And, they're, and some are still and worried still. because it's a barrier. It's almost a physical barrier they have with their but I think thinking recognizing with it, that thinking it, pattern is yeah. wrong and, and yeah. actually with Eastern and I'm fascinated by this how Eastern replacement can change personality almost 
um, they're back to who they are. They're thinking much more rationally. Yeah. Um, you know, they're happier on the on the gel. They're, they're not as worried. Yeah. But it, it's a symptom of their menopause, not almost not taking the HRT. Yes. Um, Gosh, but, it's yeah. such a, a double, triple, quadruple whammy. Isn't yes, it, it is. For, for it women, is. it's it's it like is. you're attacked on every side. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you actually know, first of all, you're anxious and you're vulnerable, so you yes. find it really hard yeah. to get to the GP. Yes. Then when you get there, the GP isn't trained and informed and so, so is likely to offer you antidepressants. Yeah. Then when you battle through that, you finally yeah. get your prescription. Yes. And then you read the leaflet that's inside it. And yes. then your brain is telling you all the time, oh, oh no, 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 I'm, yes, I'm, 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 I'm fearful, I, I can't yes. do this. Yes. So you so many hurdles. That's why so I think, many. that's why I talk about it so mm. often, mm. is to try and give support to midlife women yes I think to that's try and so get helpful. over this I think that's so helpful hearing your voice that's not <laughs> medical but is well researched and given good evidence to well, it's, people I'm I think that will help delighted that you know I have the medical experts who can back that up because as you say mm. I'm not medical but I do talk to a lot of different but that's medics why it's good because you are uh, and have and have personal mm. experience and I think what's interesting moving on from that is looking yeah. at the the new wave of brain medicine, if you like, with with estrogen replacement and mm. looking at things like Alzheimer's. Mm. And I know there have been some mm. really interesting studies in America looking yes. at how low yeah. levels of estrogen in yeah. midlife, I mean, really yes. quite early, late mm -hmm. 30s, early 40s, mm. is predisposing us or setting mm. us up for Alzheimer's in later life. This is interesting research coming out, um, how there are changes on MRI PET scanning for the brain from a woman um, who receives estrogen, how the actual changes can be seen on in the brain, and certainly from my practice, you can see one of the one of the other reasons why it's difficult to get the right treatment is women haven't got the words. They're not only are they anxious, um, exhausted, tired. You actually, it's very difficult sometimes to articulate how you're feeling because your memory, your word finding difficult, you have word finding difficulties. Mm. So it just shows how estrogen, low estrogen levels affect our cognitive function and how certainly anecdotally how I've seen women get back to their normal selves they're functioning at work they're back in their high you know mm. high high achieving life again and, and functioning normally absolutely it's, terrifying it's, and I was terrified to read that women are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's yes in the first place yes so yeah. I guess that is what led researchers to think, think you know, why is that what's the difference between mm. men and women the mm. main difference yeah. is the hormones exactly. that, that we run on yeah. our brains are filled yes. with estrogen which yes. we lose yeah and therefore that's giving mm. us a major risk factor it, it, it really it really is um, it's an important part for our cognition and our, mm. certainly I'm taking it really for, as well to, for my future um, mental health for and brain my health. And my brain yeah. health yeah do men create estrogen do they use it at all they 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 do but it's very small amount um, mm. um so I, I don't think it's as you know as important for men that right. estrogen no it's very small amount and then earlier on you mentioned um testosterone in yes, terms of brain yes, yeah. function. So that's yeah. something that's also mm. has an impact in terms of mood and emotion, does it? Yeah. Well, it's it's um, it, if you think about it, the ovary produces more testosterone than estrogen. So it's a, an important female hormone, which obviously is lost in the menopause. Um, and classically, it helps not only libido, a million things affect libido, but it does help libido, and that's been proven. Mm. Um, but also, it's a lot of encouraging studies showing how it affects mood, um, concentration, memory, fatigue, this, these sort of things. Mm. Um, and so a lot of women find that helpful. They're thinking straighter, um, right. getting the right word. And I think testosterone can really yeah. help with that. We haven't got absolute um, concrete evidence yet, but there's a lot of encouraging studies mm. showing, showing that. Certainly when I began my HRT journey, mm. I started with estrogen and progesterone. Yes, yes. And then after about six months of, of yeah. getting on with that really well, yes, yes. testosterone was then added in. Just a tiny just, bit, yeah, just a little, right. little tiny yeah, bit of, yeah. of the gel. Yes. But I noticed yes. you know, almost immediately the mm. main difference for me was that clarity of thinking. Yes. Clarity I was suddenly able to, yes. to be crisper in, yes. in what I was thinking about I and remember stuff. Yes, I've, yeah, I've had that experience too myself yeah. as well. And it's so, it's all back to yourself because yeah. it is so frustrating when you've always perhaps had a good memory, mm. you could multitask, 
suddenly you you can't. It's it's yeah. it, it's it's so frustrating. Yeah. So I think it's very very helpful. Yeah. However, mm. testosterone is not licensed in the UK for women. No, it's not. No. So if women listening mm. to this are thinking, mm. how am I going to get? testosterone mm. you know maybe they're already yes. on their hrt journey yeah yeah and they're thinking yeah that all yeah. makes sense I, you know yeah. I, i'd like to to try that yes. i know some gps some gps will prescribe so it th- yes they'd have to prescribe the male for on the nhs the male form of um of testosterone is at, that going at, to give at us a much a reduced well no because we monitor it we only give, <laughs> okay. we only give a very very small amount of right. testosterone um that's available and it has to be monitored you have to have blood tests regularly Do to you? make yeah just to make sure like that, what six monthly or annually yeah six monthly to start mm-hmm. with three months to start with six months and uh to see that make sure that you're in the physiological range for women right uh, your testosterone level so it's perfectly safe then. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is difficult. It's an emerging topic. So yeah. um, you really have to have a GP with specialist interest or be referred to an NHS menopause clinic. Yes. Um, and there are NHS that. menopause there are, clinics, there aren't are, they? They're, yep, they're, they're we not need more. widely advertised. But there, there are, and that's and that's mm. the way to get it. Otherwise, I'm afraid it, it's a private. Job. I've heard uh, of women going online to online pharmacies and ordering right. it using a male email address. Yes, that probably does happen, <laughs> yes. They, not to be recommended, Not to be recommended because it does. Because it's not being monitored. That's no, it. That, that's, yes, exactly. That's the thing. You, you, yeah. Need, yeah, you need to have your monitoring, yeah. of course, to be yeah. safe. Yeah. Interestingly, when we talk about mental health and midlife women, mm. there is a very serious side to this. Obviously, yeah. we've talked about anxiety and mm. people becoming agoraphobic and, mm. and too anxious and giving up work. But mm. it's such a high risk rate for suicide. That's right. It's the peak of suicide for women. That's astonishing, mm. isn't mm. it? It is. It is. A, a, dreadful really statistic um that must be due to the menopause in yeah. part in, yeah. in maine i should think um but that needs to be looked at and uh, you know it's a, it's a crisis really yes for women um and you see some poor women they've had to see psychiatrists they're on numerous um uh antidepressants antipsychotics tranquilizers yeah. um and they have a part because if if what happens with the fluctuating levels of estrogen, it can trigger a cascade of reactions. I think in mm-hmm. the brain that that can almost get get into a sort of um, psychosis sometimes mm-hmm. in very severe, very very severe cases. And of course, the psychiatrist is needed and yeah. for their help. Then there is inevitably going to be women listening to this mm. thinking. I'm on antidepressants. Mm. I've been prescribed mm. this. Mm. I feel that actually there are other symptoms going yes. on. Yeah. I don't feel that I'm clinically depressed. Yes. And they may want to go back and revisit yeah. talking to their doctor. Yes. How easy is it then to... Could you, Can you take oestrogen at the same time as antidepressants totally, and totally. wean yourself off? Because yeah. obviously you can't just stop, can you? No, you no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that at all. And it's a common scenario. So I have a lot of patients who are already on antidepressants. So I start them on the HRT. I say, just leave the antidepressants for now let's get everything nice and stable Mm -hmm. and then with your own doctor you could then slowly come come off them but it has to be slowly and and with your doctor uh, helping you just to come off slowly Mm. but then that's but that's fine yeah and the effects of living without estrogen for women who are sort of mm. listening to this thinking, well, I'm fine, actually, you know, my mood is OK. Yeah. I'm, you know, yes. do you think that actually there yeah. will come a point in the future where we'll be saying to all women, yes, you need estrogen to survive and thrive and actually almost sort of prophylactically be given it, yes, even if you yes. have no symptoms? I think that could come. I think we are already aware how important it is to manage the menopause now. Yeah. Um, it's been brushed under the carpet for far too long. And we're now realising, um, probably due to the fact we're now living for longer, we can see the effects of 30 years without oestrogen, how important it is. And also a lot of women may say they don't have any symptoms, but actually yeah. they, 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 they've they been diagnosed with fibromyalgia because of their muscle pains <laughs> or um, they have terrible migraines still um, and they just think that's because they've always had migraines. Yeah, or incontinence. Incontinence. I know we've talked about that exactly. before. Exactly. All you these things have sort of been weakness. normalised yeah. uh, by women over, over time. So now we're re-looking at that saying, hang on, this isn't... Uh, how it sh- how it needs to be, uh, we can help treat this, and we can then help protect the heart and the bones um, with HRT. Mm. It decreases your risk of heart disease, as we said, and it helps um, prevent osteoporosis and will treat osteoporosis. Will it really? So, so if you're somebody huge. in older life, yeah, mm. you can actually expect to get some relief. 
from osteoporosis? Yes. To, to what sort of extent? Yeah, I mean, oh, it can, it's a first line treatment um, between fifty and sixty um, really? for, for 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 osteoporosis. Um, so because it is it is so helpful and uh, it helps mm. build up the bone. And when you think about one in two women over the age of fifty yeah, will have course, osteoporosis. Yeah. It doesn't hurt osteoporosis, so people don't know they've got it. It's not the same as osteoarthritis, which is painful, swollen joints. Um, it, it is, it's one day they fall over and they break a hip, mm. perhaps in their 70s or 80s, um, which is costing the NHS billions, actually. Yeah, there's a more billions. Yeah, mm. there's a mortality risk with that. And if you do survive a broken hip, 80% become dependent. So if we can prevent this by getting stronger bones at an earlier time, yeah. that's that'd be brilliant. Have you always worked in menopause? Because you, did you start your life as a GP? I started my life as an anaesthetist, actually. Did you really? A general a medic first, then yeah. anaesthetist, and then a general practitioner, but have subsequently And now, is it? are you totally dominated your work with yes, menopause? Yes, this, I'm totally, this, this totally. This is your focus? Yes, it is now. It and it is. must be so incredibly rewarding. I find it so rewarding. Um, I've done... As you just heard, lots of different types of medicine. Mm. They have been very rewarding always, but this particularly um, uh, is 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 amazing. How much better women feel with the right dose yeah. and the right type of HRT. That's the thing, isn't it? That's so it. that there yeah. are there is a bit of trial and error potentially. That's, yes, it is. And getting the right levels. Some people absorb well. Some people don't absorb so well. Mm. So we do have sometimes to tr get the right dose. But when yeah. we're there. Usually most people feel better. It's just a matter of how much better. Can we just talk a bit about progesterone? Mm, because yeah. that's the other hormone that gets prescribed so often alongside estrogen. Yes, so exactly. So why is it prescribed and what's it doing? So progesterone is important. Uh, the reason we prescribe it, if you have a womb, estrogen, with all its fantastic beneficial effects, will cause thickening of the lining of the womb, which if left could go on to hyperplasia, which could possibly cause problems in the, in, the, in, the, in the future. So to prevent that, we need a progesterone to keep the lining thin, and that's really important. So that can be given as a tablet um, or as a marina coil, um, which also covers you for contraception, so that releases progesterone into the womb and right. keeps the lining nice and thin. And that's the only reason, really, we give progesterone, is to protect the lining of the womb. So if you've had a hysterectomy, if you don't have a womb... That's right. You, you don't, don't need absolutely progesterone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But I have heard there have been a lot of, sort of discussions and forum groups chatting yes. about progesterone yes. and mental health. Yes. And saying that it yeah. has a mood altering, it, you know, could, should we be taking it for other reasons if we didn't have a uterus? Yeah. No, that's that's right. I mean, progesterone can, in some people, cause problems with the mood. Um, low, flat, PMT type symptoms. Cause problems. So if you take yes, it, it, it can, could lower it. It can, okay. it can cause some problems in some people, particularly if they've always had PMT or postnatal depression. Um, really? They're perhaps more sensitive to fluctuations in estrogen and progesterone there. So what could you do in that case? So, well, f well we always Because you still want to protect the womb. We need to protect you? the womb, which is important. So choosing the type of progesterone is important. So we always use um, body identical natural uh, progesterone from the yam root vegetable. Um, so that that is identical to the structure of a progesterone in our bodies. So for many women, they can tolerate that. And that's um, called utrogestin. Utrogestin, that's yeah, right. That's the one that I take. That's right. So that, that, that often has less side effects. Um, uh, compared with the older progesterones, they're called synthetic progesterones, which are similar to our own progesterone. Is that progestogen? That's right. The group is called progest progestogens. Mm. Um, but they often have more side effects. Okay. Irritability. So it's worth switching. Yeah, greasy skin, spots, that sort of thing. Um, so it's it's getting the right type of, of progesterone. There's some other benefits as well from the body identical progesterone because... Um, as you know, Liz, the risk of breast cancer with HRT is incredibly low with combined HRT, and there's no increased risk with people taking estrogen-only HRT mm. or people who are younger than 45 and young women don't have an increased risk of breast cancer with HRT. But if you have a womb and you're 
50, you do need a progesterone. And we think mm. it's the progesterone that possibly increases that very small risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so the type of progesterone we use is important. And the it's encouraging studies with the eutrogestin, the body identical to progesterone. There's been a five-year study in France showing how safe that is. And in fact, they didn't find an increased risk of breast cancer in that in that study. Really? So uh, the proof is coming, but it yeah. um, hasn't in, uh, it so this, hasn't so entirely this, uh, got there. So this progesterone, mm. the eutrogestin, which is, comes in a little capsule. That's right. You can get it on the NHS mm -hmm. from your GP. Yeah. It's body identical. Yes. Regulated. Yes. We're not talking Less about... side effects wild yam creams from the internet no no not at all it's <laughs> proper very different proper medically approved yeah nice nice safe. guidance approved yeah. safe proper stuff yeah. um and uh, you know it, it, i like it because it's natural it mimics the physiology of the woman yes. um it probably it has less side effects um and you know we've got these studies saying it probably is possibly has less effect on the breast, but that's not absolutely proven yet. Mm. And makes you sleep or helps you sleep. That's I, the I other thing. Yes, sorry, I should have said that. Yes, you take it at night and it really yeah. helps sleep. Um, is that because it's got this like calming? It's got a calming effect. effect. It actually increases GABA, which is a, um, a neurotransmitter in the brain, which helps sleep. So some women find that you know, very helpful because what insomnia, as you know, is one of the symptoms of the menopause. Yeah. Um, so if you have a progesterone, you take at night, you sleep well, you get a good deep sleep, a refreshing sleep. Yes. Um, that's that's helpful. How interesting. Does that mean then that if you're feeling quite anxious and worked up, you could take it? Some people that? find it, it, uh, it, everyone's different, but some people find it quite helpful. It has a calming effect yeah. and feel quite nice and calm. So if they're very anxious, um, we do sometimes use it to help help calm people as How well interesting and then the That's other thing i've also read is that if you're very sensitive to progesterone mm, you can mm. use it vaginally yeah so even this uh, body identical natural progesterone can cause symptoms in some people and upset mm -hmm. some people again we're all different so you can use it um the same capsule and and just use it into the vagina at half the dose so um, every other day so if you're taking it every night you take it every other day or if mm -hmm. you're taking two for two weeks in a, in a sequential regime you just take one and and pop it into the vagina at night right. and hardly anything gets into the bloodstream that way so that's a, a way so it's protecting it's still the protecting womb. enough yeah. to protect the womb but not give you side effects interesting mm. and just while we're on the subject of wombs mm. endometriosis yes. and the build up of things like fibroids and the lining yeah. of the womb is yeah. that helped by progesterone but yeah progesterone will will it won't help fibroids um, but it will it would just keep if there's a endometriosis a lot of people may have patches of endometriosis in the pelvis mm. so uh, the, if you have estrogen these these patches could thicken in the pelvis so you do need an oral tablet to help or uh, to help yeah. keep those those so if you have endometriosis thin. it doesn't preclude you from hrt Not you just need to be careful with your progesterone yes, that's component. right yeah and how you take it yeah. and so what about fibroids are, are they fed by estrogen um well the problem is with fibroids, if you were to go through the menopause without HRT, they, they will shrink away. Um, and HRT just stops that happening. It doesn't make them go doesn't huge feed or them and feed them, them and make them go enormous right. or anything. It just doesn't but it reduce just, them. It, that's right. So you just that's keep right. with them at that Yes, you keep level. as you had done all through your menstrual cycles um, for the right. previous years. Right, that's good to know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, that is just so encouraging. And just on that subject very quickly before we finish on terms of doses, mm. um, I, know, I use the gel and, yeah. you know, I think I started off with two pumps, which is sort of fairly yes. average. Yes. I have to use at least five pumps. Sure. Yes. At night. Yes. And, you know, yeah. when I talk about this to other women, yes. they're going, wow, you know, oh, and it yes. can make all the difference. Doses. It's not yes. just have some estrogen. No. It's have it in the right that's amount right. that's going to work it, for you. Is yeah. that right? It's all about, well, where we practice is about uh, the individual. Yeah. Um, so it depends on that. Can you have too much estrogen? You're not going to really harm someone from too much estrogen. You could rub yeah. an entire bottle of oestrogen gel on you, <laughs> you and you, survive. You, you, you probably have a lot of breast tenderness and discomfort, okay. um, but you will survive. Yeah. Um, but doses are tailored to the individual, yeah. um, and that's important. And I often say to women in perimenopause, they've got a degree of ovarian function, so they may just need a small amount to start with. Okay. But 
um, rest assured, it's going to get lo- lower and lower. So, am I going to need to use more and more over time? Depends, Do you think, or will it stabilise? It depends, doesn't it? Where we so are. So, it's on a personal yes. consultation. Yeah. Now. <laughs> well, I got you. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Where, when your o- ovarian function starts to decline, how quickly that will be. So, it could be over seven years uh, before it's gone down to nothing, um, or it may be over two or three years. So, it's it's, be, it's helping the woman be aware of what her menopausal symptoms are, and if they're creeping back in. So perhaps she's obliterated mm. all the flushes and sweats, yeah. but then six months later they're creeping back in, or her mood suddenly drops. She feels she's felt fantastic, and then she's feeling, I'm uh, feeling like I'm falling off a cliff again. What's happening? Right. It's not working. Then the panic. It, they're not. It's not working. It, it's not that it's not working. That the dose needs to be altered or perhaps increased. Mm. To, to optimise their symptoms. Yeah. And in terms of brain health, mm. obviously we're going to be using our brains and hopefully yeah. our bodies forever yeah. And, yeah. And, until we depart. Um, does that mean that we're going to be needing our oestrogen forever? Well, I, there's no time limit for, t- for taking HRT. I certainly am going to carry on forever because yeah. of the benefits it affords. We must remember that some women, um, the symptoms... They say perhaps lasts about seven years, but I've got 80-year-olds who are still having hot flushes who've never taken HRT. And they come um, to you at 80. I mean, my mother's well, gone back onto HRT aged 80. Yes. It took her yes, three doctors before yeah, uh, we found yeah, one who would prescribe her, it. Yeah. But she had had it before. Yes. And, and had then, felt well. And had yes, felt well yes, and then stopped and then has yes, gone back. But yeah. you, you can prescribe it for ladies that we, old who've have, never had it before? I don't... You, no, 80 is quite a... I, that, that's not, unusual. That, that's unusual. Mm. But certainly people in their 60s and... 70s mm. I have started on slowly. slowly the requirements are less after sure. the age of 60 um, but it's all about the individual consultation talking about things yeah. uh, risks and benefits but the it's benefits, never too late what a great yeah it's never story. too late and you can take it um, you know it's up to the individual they should have an annual review with their doctor mm-hmm. and discuss how they're feeling how the pe- benefits are helping them or if there are any risks and it's up to them mm. really for their and that was the nice guideline change wasn't mm. it because it used to be five mm. years that's right yeah Yes, the lowest I think some doctors aren't, 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 aware aren't up of that. to that. No, yeah. no, aren't up to speed yeah. with that. But it is there is no time limit. Um, it's a shared decision um, yeah. because of the benefits again on the heart and the bones. It will always protect the bones for as long as you take it. When you stop HRT, though, the effects on the bones will then be be lost to a certain extent. Well, I'm with you, Rebecca. I'm mm. going to be taking it forever. You will prize Good. it out of my dying hand, probably. <laughs> I know Louise has, has said that before, that a lot of her patients feel the same. Yes. And definitely. it's just so encouraging mm. to be able to sit here and talk to you so knowledgeably about all the many, many health benefits. And we just need to get this word out, don't we? We certainly do. No, definitely. Well, thank you for being back. I look forward to talking again. No, thank you. I've enjoyed it. It's been lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And sadly, that is all we have time for today. But as always, you will find all the resources that we've mentioned in today's show over at lizellwellbeing.com, where you can also subscribe to my free weekly newsletter for more well-being wisdom, including menopause guidance, healthy recipes and exclusive discounts. Do please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast that ensures that next week's episode is downloaded safely. A huge thanks to all those that have taken the time to leave a review. It really does help all listeners to find the show and get the information they may very well need. So until next week, go well. Bye-bye. The Lizelle Wellbeing Show is presented by me, Lizelle, with production by Amaryllis Earl and Harry Trevithick at Heart Dialogue, with thanks to my producer, Ellie Smith, and the guest booker, Millie de la Morinière.